announcements. Um, on Thursday, January 23rd at 5 p.m., we're going to have a happy hour at Penny Lane Street Bar, which is on San Jacinto. It's not too far away from here. Um, Austin Food Marketing and Roadwork Creative, that's our business. We're going to buy drinks for the first 50 people who come. So come on out. It's on our meetup page if you get more information. And then our next talks are Chris from Soleil. Um, he's going to tell a story about starting his brand and we'll be sharing, um, I think, some samples, possibly, uh, and what that experience is like. <laughs> and then on Tuesday, March 3rd, we're going to have a speaker who's talking about research and how that research can impact your food marketing strategy. I'm excited to introduce Raul today. Uh, he is the owner of Shaved Ice Island, which is the highest rated, I believe, as far as star rating dessert company in Austin. And he also does a really awesome YouTube channel where he does different sorts of interviews and jokes and sort of engaging things out in the community. And um, he's going to come up here and talk about pranking your customers and how to in improve loyalty and get repeat business. So, thank you. I like how this baby was mean mugging me the entire time. <laughs> I couldn't stop looking at the baby. Uh, she was she just like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, new presentation is. Three powerful ways to increase loyalty and repeat business. Our business is shaped by sound, as she said. We have a giant trailer in South Boston in front of Westgate Lane's bowling alley, Lane Cannon Westgate. Any of y'all three been out there before? Yeah. We cater for companies like Yeti Coolers, Apple, Tito's Vodka, Samsung, Tinder, Porchies. We've done Facebook, Bizarre Voice, and then just a bunch of schools and churches. Uh, currently have a staff of about 20 people. How did we get started? Uh, I started in 2014. I really didn't know what I was doing when I started the company. Um, it just seemed like I had like a little bit of a food marketing background, um, working with different restaurants. But as far as shaved ice goes, like I wasn't. Um, I liked it for sure. But once I started the business. I didn't even know how to, uh, like where, how to run a food trailer or to like how to actually make frozen desserts and any of that stuff. So then when I actually started using the machine, the, the, I, the ice machine that you use, you use like giant rectangular blocks in there. I didn't know how to actually use the machine or like tighten the machine. So then when I would, for my first like dozen customers or so, like the machine would just rip through the entire ice block and just be like gah, 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 and just eat up the entire block in like five seconds. And I'd be like freak out. I'd be like, ah, I don't even know what's going on. Like I didn't know how to use um, the machine and like how to actually make people's desserts. But eventually I like figured it out. Um, started to serve customers and but then I didn't really know where to serve. So uh, I went to some parks, I went to some like foot traffic type areas, like I didn't know where to take this giant truck that I designed and, and created. Uh, I eventually found like a good spot at a popular pool um, out near the Mueller area uh, and I just like set up shop over there and like business was like pop and I was like super excited. Um, I had a long line and I was like feeling like uh, this is going to be a major success, but I didn't realize it's illegal to serve at a city pool or park without like a special permit. So the person that busted me was cool. They just said, hey, here's a number, call this person and they'll get you like moving in the right direction. That permit took a little while to get, so uh, I ended up like floating around Austin. Um, for a while, I eventually found a food truck spot uh, next to La Barbecue. Anybody had La Barbecue before? Popular like barbecue spot in Austin um, over on Cesar Chavez. But I didn't realize that they were closed on Monday, 
they were closed on Tuesday, and the busiest times for shaved ice, or like if you're going to start like a frozen dessert of some kind, the busiest time for those desserts are in the afternoon and in like the late evening, like after dinner when people want to get something to eat. So the barbecue was like Franklin's, they were sold out of barbecue by like early afternoon, so I didn't realize that the food park was completely empty like by the time people would want shaved ice. So uh, that's something I had to deal with and, and just kind of bounced around Austin. Uh, eventually in 2015, we found our home at Westgate Lanes in South Austin. So that was like a good street traffic in front of a bowling alley um, out south. The only issue was they kicked me out just a week, like one week after being there because the owner of the diner inside of the bowling alley um, said that we were interfering with his dessert sales that would go on inside the bowling alley to like bowling alley customers, so like selling ice cream or, or whatever he wanted to sell. So Westgate Lanes, they said, hey, don't go talk to this guy, but like this is what's happened and uh, we're sorry, it's like our hands are tied kind of thing. So. They told me not to talk to him, but then I went and talked to him like two days later and kind of confronted him and said, hey, like, this is what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm not trying to hurt um, your business. And like, if there's any way I can help you in some way, uh, maybe we can work something out. So we eventually like kind of worked it out and set up at Westgate Lanes. So that's kind of been our uh, kind of a rocky path to finding the spot that uh, I felt was best for us. Do you sell there in the winter also? No, we are closed during uh, November, December, January, and February. Okay. So like, when I started the business, um, that was one thing I heard about like shaved ice was that like winter time you can kind of pack up. So I was like, hey, if I can figure out a way to uh, make most of my money in the summertime um, and kind of take it easy in the winter time, I'm all for that. So, Business started to take off over the few years after that. Lots of repeat business, um, growing reviews and word of mouth, as well as our own customers started referring us into catering, um, catering events. People that worked for like different corporate companies, uh, you know, had kids in schools nearby, like PTA members, people in different churches, things like that. So we received positive press. Um, different bloggers as well as like a feature on We Are Austin, the news program. So things started taking off. Uh, we put on some charity events, raised like thousands of dollars for uh, Pets Alive, Meals on Wheels, and some other charities. So that was like one way that we um, helped give back to the South Austin community, which is like we're now we're, like pretty entrenched in South Austin. And Ultimately, we now have nearly 400 views across all the different platforms, but we still maintain a near five-star average. Uh, sales have grown by 25 to 50% each year, and uh, things are continuing to expand, um, even without expanding the number of locations that we have. So it was kind of a rocky path, but ultimately, it has all been worth it especially because we got to capture a video of our shaved ice dancing man twerking <coughs> against a pole. <laughs> <laughs> so how have we kept it all growing? I'll, sh I'll give you guys three different ways that we've uh, increased our loyalty and as well as uh, brought up repeat business. I think the main thing for us was uh, always finding ways to creatively stand out. And I think the operating phrase was keep finding because you can do something to attract people at the beginning, but um, like never stop, always like continuing to figure out like innovative ways to do something different or make people laugh, um, constantly working at it. And the, the main start for us was uh, our our menu. 
So most like shaved ice places will have a, a classic flavor list or like a standard type of syrups that go on most like shaved ice or snow cones. Um, everybody, everybody likes that stuff, so we wanted to make sure that we were able to like include a menu of um, the flavor, the classic flavors that everybody likes, but we also wanted to do, create our own unique flavor list um, that was like a next level, like one level up. So something unique that would include things like juice-based shaved ice, as well as like popular Mexican flavors. I don't know if anybody's ever had like a picadilly, which is a dill pickle shaved ice with a little bit of sweet with chili powder and like a crazy chamoy sauce on it. It's wild. It took me like 18 months to start liking it, but mm -hmm. you had it before? I'm pretty semi-familiar with that. Yeah. As well as tea and coffee-based shaved ice. So um, worked with Chameleon Cold Brew and created a, like a Chameleon Cold Brew coffee-based shaved ice, which is my favorite. These are, t it's kind of coincidental that these are actually my two favorite shaved ice flavors. But Creamy Cold Brew Coffee, this is a notorious POG. It's based on the Hawaiian Pog drink, so it's a passion fruit, orange, guava juice, big shaved ice. You guys are all getting free shaved ice, so yeah. It sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll get your free cards. <coughs> uh, creative ways we found that we could stand out. Um, our slogan, for starters, our slogan is life-changing snow cones. So that's kind of been our like punchy slogan that's kind of stuck over the years. And, and everybody likes um, hearing that and they think it's a joke at first until they're like, holy shit, this is life changing. <laughs> uh, our different street signs, we made sure to put like lots of street signs similar to, uh, you'll see like, if you're like in the e-commerce space, like driving traffic into like a landing page or like using advertising to drive to your website, similar, you have traffic like driving down the street using signage to drive people into your location. So using like humorous signs along Westgate and stuff like that to help drive people to our location. That was really important. Um, signage and like decor on the trailer. We got like a Halloween set up. Uh, this was a mini game right here. I had a, I was arguing with my, one of my friends. I said, hey, middle-aged ladies all think that Dr. Oz is like super hot and they're super turned on for Dr. Oz. Hey, do you chicks like Dr. Oz? <laughs> and I wouldn't say I think he's hot. Yeah, I would say my grandma likes Dr. Oz. <laughs> <laughs> I can't misinterpret it. I also age. don't think 35 is middle aged though. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm figuring on it too, so. I'm <laughs> but uh, I, I could swear Dr. Oz was hot among women aged 35 through 60, and he thought not, so I designed this flyer. We put put it on both sides of the trailer, serving side in, and uh, and ordering side, and I was definitely wrong. He, <laughs> he is definitely not hot. <laughs> uh, there's also more like conventional ways that you can stand out. Uh, that could be like, you know, like upgrading the on a simple decor around your product. So we would bring in like fancy napkins and like sometimes like napkins with jokes and stuff on it. Uh, you can sell t-shirts which can you know help solidify your your brand message and as well as uh, you have another avenue to to create like funny um, jokes as well as st stickers. Everybody in Austin likes stickers. We all know that. And uh, incorporating dogs into your business seems to be a foolproof method for success. We've heard that before. So what we have done was create free shaped ice for dogs. Um, so we have like a little ice, a little whipped cream, and like a milk bone on it. So if anybody that brings their dogs can get something for free. Uh, and it also makes for copious amounts of social media material. Mm. 
So our newest form of standing out has been Shaved Ice TV. This is our new YouTube channel. And like she mentioned, uh, we're kind of documenting Austin events as well as interviewing different people at our trailer um, with different themes. So this year we're gonna be creating like some more like game show style uh, videos, maybe some like uh, like dating, like a, like a, what was it, a Tinder date type, type of like game show at the trailer. We might do some like doggy dating like type videos too. So that'll be kind of on the slate for 2019. And here's a little clip, here's like a 20 second clip of us asking people to make uh, expressions about liking shaped eyes. Can you make the sound of yourself excited, enjoying a cup of shaved ice? Ah, brah! Hard, 
um, we will we will stay open just as a joke um, for anybody that shows up and and we've gotten to the point where there are still people that are coming to get shaved ice when it's like pouring ass rain outside. Here is one uh, one of our experiences from. So like make sure to take care of these people. Um, something we've done is 
whenever we see our customers around town or at different catering events, if we're at, you know, like near, at a South By event or like at a different like doggy events like we cater at around town, uh, if we see any customers from our Westgate location, we treat them like VIPs um, at that event and then hook up like their whole family um, with free shaped eyes. Uh, if we, HEB is kind of the place where you see everybody you know like randomly. So anytime you see somebody, I see somebody at HEB, I just like give them free cards just for seeing them. Uh, when you were saying you see people at events, you have the one truck, right? Well, we have the, the Westgate trailer yeah. as well as two catering trucks. Oh, okay. So catering trucks going to random events around town and then the Westgate big trailer is just that so stationary. The West, okay, that one always stays there, like the one at Westgate. And exactly. the other two when you're talking about events, those are the two that you take out there. Exactly. So, but then we close everything down during the winter time. Mm -hmm. But we'll start picking back up like when starting to take like caterings for the spring and, and uh, especially when South Byron's around but uh, the trailer opens back up in early March. How, do you just do you just recognize people who come regular regularly? Yeah people that you get to know them? Like as we expand it then like as you expand you're gonna have to start delegating more so like over the years like I'm starting to recognize people more because I can't, I couldn't be in the trailer like the entire time. Like it's fun and everything, like talking to each other. But when you start like running multiple locations and then running like stocking and stuff like that, then uh, then I kind of like broaden out a little bit. But I still see like tons of people I still recognize. Uh, yeah. uh, one thing we did was your review list. Um, if you're able to contact the people that write reviews for you, we we contacted them and said, uh, "Hey, we're about to reopen. What's your mailing address? I'm going to send you like a present." So they'd already written a review for us. Like we didn't even like ask them to. Um, I think we've only asked like you know like I, would, I wouldn't say like less than a quarter of our reviews have come like because I asked them to. But um, pretty much everybody. We just sent them a message, hey, I'm going to you up with like a present, like what's your mailing address? And we sent them like fun cards, like with free, um, free cards in it saying, hey, we're um, the party's back, we're going to be open on this day. So trying to build the buzz among people that uh, you consider to be VIPs. When you do ask people for reviews, how do you do that? Is it just like a sign up on the truck or do you do it verbally or? I brought, I had, a, I had some lemonade signs I was going to bring. But uh, yeah, I had one on the truck um, that just said, uh, just a genuine message. Like, if you if you like this place, you know, if you like Shape by Sound, uh, we super appreciate it. You just like, and even anything basic is like good enough to um, get them to act. One, like a joke that you can put on it is, and if you don't like this place, don't write a review. <laughs> Uh, and finally on this was to be be proactive about managing your negative reviews like there's always going to be haters and a lot of those people they aren't always negative they're just like having a bad day or like in a bad mood so they're in those emotions um, those emotions are strong that day so you need to respond to like any negative reviews. Got to respond to it fast because um, you got to catch them all. They're hot, essentially. So, so one thing that we've done was to like address every review, negative review, like quickly and with sincerity. And because of that, we've had a lot of people like write negative reviews and then delete those reviews, um, as well as. You know, people people increasing the reviews because they understand that we're like trying to make it right. You know what I mean? And then some of them, like people, they just don't understand. Uh, and for example, one guy he wrote like he gave us a poor review because uh, it was still light outside. We were cl we closed at 8 p.m. and it was still light outside. Um, and he wrote a negative review like, "Hey, 
it's still bright outside, like y'all shouldn't be closed at this time. One star. So, so just making him understand that, hey, like it takes 30, 40 minutes to close. It's all girls like working at this time. Um, we just try to keep it safe, like keep a level of safety to where like it can still be light outside while they're like shutting down. People like, you know, understand, give good reasons, like find why you do what you do. And especially if, uh, if it is your fault, then like own up to it and, uh, and promise to make it right next time. I have a question on negative reviews. Sure. Never having dealt with that. Why don't you give them some time to calm down? And what's because you said sometimes people are just in a bad mood or have a bad day, and well, then maybe the next day it isn't that big of a deal, whatever aggravated them. Well, what I found is that if you if you give them time to calm down, sometimes then they'll know they'll forget about it and they'll never even respond again. So like a lot of them, when I when I responded two or three days later, I never even heard back, and like I had no choice but to like also write a public review that helps like us look better because they never even responded to it. But I feel like when somebody writes a negative review, they're checking it like multiple times that day and like, and they're telling their friends like, screw this guy, like he did, this place did this and they're checking it multiple times. So I feel like that's like, it was the best way to get um, a quicker response. So, so when you but I'm sure there's merit in that as well. So you when you're responding, get... you're trying to respond privately to them yeah, yeah. Like Especially on Facebook, you DM them or something yeah, rather than yeah. writing a public response. I feel like Yelp is the place where everybody likes to burn people. Um, but yeah, you can respond privately and then uh, and then have it one more, they allow you one more response, which can be a public response. So one private, one public. So usually people don't respond to any of the private messages. In the public message, I'll say, Hey, I I responded to you privately, but there was no response. I'll include that line in in the public response to sh to make sure they like know that people everybody, well, everybody knows changing. everybody knows that yeah. hey, I tried to make it right yeah. personally, but you didn't respond to that. You know, so uh, since this was prank for customers, I'll leave y'all with a one of our videos from this. This summer that we recorded the creeper prank. This is where I pretended to be a shady uh, creeper, potential drug dealer, hiding behind the trailer, um, asking customers if, um, trying to get customers to approach me. So I'll we'll play this, and then after that we can, if y'all have any other questions, then I'll send them my way. I'm gonna come sit down next to you. Oh wait. Today we are creeping on customers. Will we be able to lure them to give them a coupon? I was getting people, I was hitting people like free cards and like buying them free cards.
my favorite one. Stuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're committed now. <laughs> when you 
uploaded video to YouTube? Are you taking any proactive measures so that you have more people view it, or you just load well, it up and then that's it? Well, th I mean, at first, like now, I'm now kind of my focus has been like, hey, how do we figure out how to build like the audience mm -hmm. base? So um, that's kind of the part I'm working on. Like we we are adjusting like our outros and our like intros to um, create more engagement. Uh, as well as you know, some, like the subscribe screen at the end and stuff like that, um, as well as uh, start reaching out. I'm going to start reaching out to more like people with larger followings to potentially work together, um, collaborate somehow, as well as do like you know paid shoutouts and things like that. So I think that's kind of kind of the battle that everybody like has at the beginning is like how do you get popular um, at the beginning. So that'll be kind of the uh, one of the goals for the year. Well, you mentioned in the beginning that um, you got kicked out from Westgate from the bowling alley, and then you talked to the person in charge of the booth. What what was the what arrangement could you have made that was beneficial to them that involved you still being there? Because you're definitely going to be six. Yeah. What was how did you well, work that it, out? It turns out that the guy that owned the diner inside of the bowling alley, he also owned the CC's Pizza. Um, down the street, so he was, he was, he actually called the restaurant inside of the bowling alley CC's also, but he also sold like burgers and you know nachos and like pretzels and like you know bowling alley food. Mm -hmm. um, but then CC's cracked down on him. You're not supposed to sell burgers at at CC's Pizza, right? So. C, it's spelled C I C I C C S. He changed the name to Say Say's. C E C E. He just simply just changed the name um, to Say Say's Burgers and Fries. Um, but to answer your question, um, since he owned that CC's Pizza down the street, uh, that's where I found him. So that's, they said that he owned that pizza place too. So he was over there. So I went and talked, I was like, hey, maybe I can. Because I would, I was designing some websites for some oh, small okay. businesses back then. And say, hey, I can create like a like a landing page site for you for your pizza place. So gotcha. And like promotions. Yeah. Like joint help, promotions. Help them, and if you wanted to put like you know, like a poster on our trailer or something for the pizza place. Gotcha. Yeah, you could do that. So, like that's what. Yeah. If you're if you're trying to. Basically, people want to know what you can do for them. Right. Yeah. And uh, that was like kind of a way that I that I got in and helped out. So he's worked with some charities here in Austin, and and I've donated some like shaped ice like caterings for for them as well to to kind of like show goodwill because without that decision, like we wouldn't have been able mm -hmm. to build a business for those few years. And so then, no problem since then. Uh. No, I mean everything's been pretty good. We we hook up the bowling alley like their staff with like half price. So if wherever you guys locate, um, if there's any any employees like close by like to a business, like you offering them like some kind of deep discount for visiting y'all, we'll put them on your side. So mm -hmm. if, even if like the because like generally the boss. The bowling like president doesn't have time to come eat shaved ice generally, but like if all of their employees are like all about us, then that that word kind of like translates yeah. up the ladder. Mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, like you like you said, the, the the president may not come, but the workers who talk to the day to day customers and people mm -hmm. will also end up recommending you because they go and have your product. We see this with other clients as well. They have like industry nights and things like that where people that are in industry as in the food and beverage industry can come in and get a discount, just a blanket discount. Even yeah, if it's not just the place you're parked, you know, it's it's something that really works. Do you give free stuff to grocery store? Like people who work in the grocery store as a checker, if your product's sold in the grocery store, mm -hmm. then they see it on someone's thing and they say, oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah they'll, right? they'll note, they're the ones who notice it the most. Like they're dealing with the most people. When, when you do email marketing and you do like guessing games with the forms, um, what exactly do you do with email marketing? And, and how much of an impact does it have? And are you tracking that? Um, 
Well, I mean, for Shape SM, we built a email base. We have like 2,000, like 2 mm -hmm. to 2,500. If you're doing like internet marketing for e-commerce, you'd be able to, especially if you're like uh, running the metrics on it, you could probably build an email that's like pretty fast if you're like mm -hmm. running traffic to it. Um, but for this, it was mainly like write it down, you know, write down on a sheet and write in your guests and things like that. <coughs> what, what, what do you send them? So once you have your mailing list, do you send them coupons? Uh, honestly, like I, like I'll put in like secret phrase, secret phrase mm -hmm. kind of stuff, um, as well as free shaved ice at the beginning of the year and mm -hmm. at the end of the year, like a free day, like to blow out the like end of the season. Um, but mostly, I feel like it's a, it's a way to connect. So, like to create something that elicits a emotional reaction rather than a a promotional tool to to bring in uh, because I feel like if you create more of like a bond to your business then the money will follow naturally. But specifically um, I think what do you think? I think that's been like the main thing. Um, just Sending like out secret phrases that they can say at the kiosk, like Not and about get a discount. Track, right? Well, yeah, you could track, but also like then everyone at the kiosk is wondering why people are saying I am the Batman. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and like those email soft, um, systems, those usually track how many clicks you get, yeah, you know, yeah. how many opens you get. Yeah. I, I don't know the percentages, but like that'll track that for you, and then using the phrase that tracks the people that actually remember to come, you know, but there's been tons of instances where people are like, oh yeah, I forgot to come, but like I love that email, and so they do feel more connected, you know, to the business and the with, with, with tracking brand. Limit, can you track the direct result in sales? I'm sorry, what was that? Can you track a direct result in sales by oh, just yeah. something out and then? Yeah, because you have to track all the sales that you're, yeah, you know, the free yeah, product yeah. that you're giving out, so you would know how many, how many I think for e-commerce, that's but did you yeah, e spice because yeah. you did something. So yeah, I feel like we usually do. Yeah, especially there's usually always more people uh, coming by. I, I would say, right? Yeah, I think. I think that was your asking someone to how much of your maybe marketing plan or strategy is you're looking to hit a certain goal. Do you, do you set goals ahead? You know, if you're sending out an email, is it just because? Is it monthly? Do it on a time schedule monthly? Um, do you respond differently if people don't open it? You know, can you make changes based on it, or you just kind of trip? I think we base it on like the holidays a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So there'll be one going out like if you do a promotion centered around the holidays, like a St. Patrick's Day or like a South by or Easter when it comes up, um, Father's Day, Mother's Day, you know, hookups for those two days, as well as like like a kickoff summer um, type email. So I guess it's kind of like. Based. Yeah, kind of time based and holiday based. And that email you showed us, that's that was kind of your closing for. I mean, that was like that bond you talked about. That was real, That was definitely genuine. That was that was it didn't you know mail chimp frames or whatever. That was just an email. yeah. And that's yeah. how is that how you? And I try to keep it text only on oh, those emails. Oh, really? Like I'll try to keep it text only and keep like. Um, like it, you can you can still go HTML and still run a text email because you can track it. They'll put the tracking codes into your HTML emails, so you can still um, write an HTML email that just looks like text. So the the crazier it looks, the more likely it's going to go to promotion or, or so you, spam. That's typically what you do. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So pretty much mostly text, because I and then you can run tests on it and then. Uh, <coughs> When you run your test emails like out of Mailchimp or Aweber or whatever, then uh, then you'll be able to see if it gets like filtered out or not. And I think like they they got those smart filters and see like if you have like if you're using certain words prom promo words, then it'll like free. automatically yeah. And so like the free one, the free one, you might need to say complimentary or something. But I remember like not trying not to use like too many like promo buzzwords mm. as much in in my emails just so that more people are likely to see it. Well, unless like good marketing shouldn't look like marketing, right? 
like at the yeah, end of the day, so. it makes it more authentic and people are more likely to engage with it, especially if you're looking at like a local audience. I'm curious to know, did you like A-B test that? That's really fascinating to me, like the, the sort of just very basic email versus something that's a little more whiz bangy with boxes and images. Like, did you send one and send the other and compare? Or just like, you feel like that's part of your identity and so you just led with that? Yeah, I think it's more like what I like what I felt and then what I what I tested when I was sending my own prompt, when I, my own test emails, then I did notice like some would go to um, promotionals as well as like in the earlier days, I did send up more like, like trying to look like bigger than I am kind of email, you know, that kind of thing. So, and, and like not getting a great response out of it. But honestly, like A-B testing and like getting into numbers based, that's the direction I might be headed a lot more in, especially since like with Shapex TV and stuff that I'm, we're gonna be running like a large amount of traffic, trying to at least run a large amount of traffic to it, so. Do you feel like if somebody wanted to do kind of what you're doing with the videos and the YouTube kind of stuff that it requires a large investment? Or uh, do you think you can just start out kind of low budget? Well, I think it just depends on the knowledge that you have. So if you're if you can edit videos and and you have like experience like with filming, some people can still do it on their iPhones and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. but like the vision that I had, I wasn't even good enough to 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 film with an iPhone, I think, like like in my editing talents. So that's why we start working with Liz and, and Stefan um, to generate some like higher quality stuff. And it's not cheap. So it's like a lot of the money that I've been making from Shaved Ice Island, I've been putting towards Shaved Ice TV just because it's like, I feel like it's a, it's, de it's definitely a passion project. Mm -hmm. um, but it also has like large scale potential to like um, drawing a lot more people into the you know, subscriber base. Could also help with ad revenue. If you have people watching, right? Even if they're not in Austin and they're probably not gonna come purchase a product from you, you might be able to just make money off them watching your videos on YouTube. Yeah, I think once you start blowing up then you can do a lot more ad revenue as well as you know paid sponsorships and uh, and then sell different products online if you want. But that would come like a lot later because we only have like 200 subscribers, so we're not, we're not making anything, that's for well, sure. Well, that's about 195 more than we have. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, but we're I'm gonna be running some, I'm gonna start getting a little more like intentional about, you, you talked about like, you know, figuring out how to grow your, getting more intentional about um, planning like video releases with like uh, some marketing behind it so that it can get a lot more views. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Does anyone else have any yeah, questions? Can I ask one last general yeah, question. Yeah, sure. How do you grow a business like yours? Because you're based, you're, 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 it's, it's, it's all based on a location, right? And on a physical location. So I'm coming from a brand side. So I just need to multiply the products that I store. I mean, how do you so how do you scale this type of business? Exactly. Uh, to scale a frozen dessert business, you have to kind of do. Well, that comes later. You got to do what I said and like create a strong brand, and that comes with you know taking care of customers, taking care of employees, um, creating a quality product implementing systems for success. Say you go to a different city, then no one knows all the great things you've been doing for your customers. Right? Exactly. So like the way to, to scale that is to really create that, um, that big customer base and then scale that through the city. Um, so I have multiple locations within the same city and then to ultimately scale it, then you create a system for franchising that concept, um, so that would include, you know, product, recipes, uh, marketing, employee management, um, all systems for, you know, for this type of business, stocking and <coughs> and, uh, and running your your credit card processing things like that. So just putting that into a system that could be 
franchised out. So into other cities, like any franchise, you um, be, there's you don't know if people want it, but then the the point of the franchise is that it's strong enough to attract people to it in a certain amount of time. And so your your scale trajectory would be like city only, then maybe county, then state, then region, then well, beyond. Yeah, well, for me, I figured that. Because like we haven't expanded locations really. Um, at first, it was like I'm I'm more of a creative type and not as much of a like systems process type. She's actually amazing at like that stuff. So um, in our relationship, we've had like a very complimentary relationship that she's good at stuff that I'm not good at. Uh, but we haven't been. We didn't expand like so we didn't expand locations other than catering just because like our, our amounts of like inquiries kind of merited that but like uh, as far as permanent locations um, we haven't expanded yet we might this year we might next year um, but for me it was mainly getting over the logistics hump like me personally like understanding like how do I how can I run and stock like and run back and forth and manage employees like all at the same time. So that was kind of the main issue for me. Um, but like we've we've created more measures for like training and like hired like human resources was all like foreign to me. Like I've never really started a serious business before. So um, just kind of learning how to do it on the fly because um, because learning about human resources in college doesn't teach you anything you know it's no. just like actually experiencing it so but we're not I'm not planning to like create a shaved ice island in any other city or anything like that just maybe like two or three here in Austin and then just try to try to grow the business um, either through like you know fun shaved ice TV stuff that didn't really grow the business but um, something related that can attract a lot of people in a different direction or um, potentially through consulting um, rather than franchising. I don't think I'd want to like have to like oversee a giant like franchise system, um, but maybe consulting. So you first, you started in 2014, is that right? And then now you have two hiring trucks now. Where was that in that timeline? Uh, that catering truck. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sorry. And when, when did that come? Uh, building? That that was the first one, and it's now one of our catering trucks. So then we got the we got a small trailer, and then in 2018 upgraded to the big trailer that's over there, the 24 foot. Uh, so in between, did you take your uh, station or your, your original trailer to a location you were at? Yeah, that was that was the tricky part about it because you have like at a permanent location you have customers that um, want you to be at a certain point at a certain place at a certain time. So that's very tricky because uh, I remember a couple of times where like big corporate event like they wanted me to be there from like you know two to four p.m. or something like that. So early in like 2015, I like like go to open up and then like sneak off to like a catering event and then like sneak back and open back up. But I knew that was like the wrong thing to do because if like if people are expecting you to be somewhere you need to you need to be there before like they burn you online about it. Alright we got time for one more before we wrap it up. Does anyone have one more question? And I'm sure you could talk one on one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there'll be that too. All right, in that case, I'm going to advance our slides here. We have a, which we're happy to do. Was this the last slide? No, you arrow, left or right. There we go. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Um, so this is all self-explanatory. We're all, we're all friends here, small room, but uh, you, you can uh, join our email list. If you sign in, we will add you to it. We promise we only send one email month, we don't spam you. Um, if you go to awesomefoodmarketing.com, if you haven't already or you're a guest here tonight, you can join our meetup group as an official member. It's free. Uh, you'll get notified of future events. And then um, if you'd like to get involved in any way, uh, speaking like Rodel was kind enough to do tonight, um, we certainly accept uh, speakers. I think we're 
booked through May um, of this year, but we do have openings in the fall. Um, and then uh, a big thank you to our sponsor, Capital Factory, which lets us use this space for free, which is really cool of them. Um, so thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight and for speaking and answering questions and staying so long in your time. I really appreciate you all. So thank you all very much. Thank you.